Hello everyone, this is Jeff Vitale, Plater Mouse. This is a recap of all the test tube torture tests that we have done so far. And I'm going to talk about some of the things that did not work and some of the stuff that I have planned for the future, ready to go. Also, if you have any uh, really cool suggestions, don't hesitate, don't be shy, and let us know what you want to see. First, I'll show you some of the projects I have coming up. This is two crayons, paraffin wax. It'd be interesting going from a solid to a liquid to a vapor. Next up is mustard. I think this is French, French's mustard. Uh, I'm not sure what that's going to do. Should be fun to see. Another good one here I'm really anxious to see are chocolate chips. Um, going from a solid to a liquid to a whatever. <laughs> And then next up is Liquid Cascade, the automatic dishwashing uh, liquid stuff. Um, should be interesting, pretty blue color. And then we got Ivory Soap, uh, and it has water in it. Uh, preliminary tests, which I'll show at the end, were not very favorable for this one. I had some issues with that. We'll see if I can get that to work though. And then we got Household Ammonia. Uh, or hydrous ammonia, a lot of water, and is uh, saturated with NH3. Then we've got DOT3 brake fluid. This sucker's pretty full. There's about 20 milliliters in there. Hope I have enough headspace there. Matt B 2099 sent me this uh, frog lube. It's a gun lubricant. Kind of weird stuff. It smells like mint. Another one I don't know if it's going to work or not is non-Newtonian fluid. It's um, cornstarch and water. It, I have a lot of problems with it settling out, so I'm going to have to like shake it up really good before I heat it up. Who knows what that's going to do. A lot of people have been wanting to see like uh, soda or cola or whatever, so I put uh, about 20, 15, 20 milliliters of Pepsi in a test tube. Another one I've a few people have suggested is a glow stick and I cut open the glow stick and inside a glow stick is a long glass ampule that separates the two chemicals um, I'm gonna have to redo this one because some of it had mixed but you get an idea what how what what's coming up here and then finally we've got a live 22 round in here you'll notice that it's uh, corroded it has a lot of vertigris on there that's from the acids in the uh, high temperature silicone that caused that. And now for the things that have not worked. This is microwave popcorn and this is what it looks like inside if you ever cut a bag open. It looks like lard and popcorn. It's nastiest looking stuff you can think of. And uh, I used a, a JB Weld plug on this one and I think that was part of the problem why it just did not work very well. Too brittle and too leaky. I think there's multiple reasons why this did not work. Um, you know, I set the test tube more horizontally in this one, so I didn't have really good heat distribution. I believe the popcorn itself uh, can't handle the heat and it begins to burn before we get that high pressure condition. Now eventually I've learned that using the high temperature silicone as a plug, uh, it acts like a, a pressure relief valve. So we're not we're not trying to make a bomb where the glass explodes, but we want to just demonstrate uh, latent heat of vaporization, putting unusual substances inside a test tube and superheating them well beyond their uh, boiling point and flash point. But at least we got a neat fireball and we get a little lesson in air fuel mixtures. Okay, and then this this was filmed at 600 frames per second the moment it it started. Uh, developing a leak the hot oil kind of whizzed out of there and then the pressure started to drop inside and the oil started to expand and flash now even with all that oil mist in the air it took a while for the air fuel mixture to be just right and to create a fireball remember you need air you need fuel and you need heat to have fire Typically when a test tube, even with a flammable material in there, ruptures, it just creates a big cloud that pushes all the oxygen and air away from the flame and will actually extinguish the flame 
on the torch. So even if we put gasoline in a test tube, chances are we're not going to get a fireball. Now this is ivory soap and a little bit of water in there. Initially I found that just heating the soap up with a torch, um, I had a lot of problems getting the soap to melt. It didn't melt like I thought it would, like you would think uh, wax or something would. So I added water as kind of a, a medium to absorb the heat. I didn't even put a uh, silicone plug or any kind of plug on this. I just put a cap on it. And the caps really don't seal on their own very well. So it's possible a lot of the pressure and steam was just leaking out as I was heating this up. Now chances are you've seen the videos that a lot of people have posted on YouTube where they took ivory soap and put it in a microwave and because it's a low density real soft soap um, and it's got a lot of air pockets in there those air pockets will expand and create like a big foam it, it's pretty cool it's well worth trying it's safe to do and um, it's pretty cheap you can pick up a few bars of soap at Walmart for about a buck fifty but the ivory soap in a microwave is has been so played out on YouTube that it's not even original anymore. So I wanted to do something original and uh, do it in a test tube. Uh, it doesn't look like it's going to happen though. So I do have a test tube prepared with a silicone plug. I'm going to give it one more shot. So far with these test tube torture tests, um, they've, they've mostly been um, successes in one way or the other. Um, these two have been failures, and I wanted to share them with you, just, you know, let you know what works and what doesn't work. Now, as far as uh, shooting videos go, um, been a lot of logistical problems that I've had here. One of the great shooting spots that we've been going to, I, I call it the apiary because it's the place where it has the beehives. Um, other shooters have been going there and trashing the place, um, leaving messes and stuff, and the farmer's been running people out of there. It's kind of a shame. And then the other problems I've had is the weather. It's been too cloudy or rainy. Um, it's uh, sometimes hard to get coordinated with friends to go film stuff. You know, a lot of people have been getting the flu and stuff like that. So it's just been a kind of a miserable first couple months of 2014 for shooting videos. So that's kind of why I've been filming a lot of these test tube videos are kind of filler videos when I can't go out and shoot stuff and I hope that uh, people are enjoying them um, so far the reaction from viewers have been has been really good so uh, anyway I hope you enjoyed this thanks for watching